Monday, the final day of January 2017 is here in front of us. We're only nine days into the new Trump administration. It is just a historic time to be alive, but the Democratic Party and others are openly trying to start a civil war and lying about President Trump's travel ban. This is going to be another incredibly important transmission straight ahead, and we're going to kick it off with a report from John Bowne. My dream was to go to America because it's the strongest country in the world. We feel that it's safe. It's the safest country. It has the strongest human rights. But with one signature, that vision of America shattered. I suppose it's what has explained so much of Donald Trump's political career, the exploitation of fear. From the Bertha campaign to the talk of Mexican no, racists, it's, it's the Muslims Trump that do has that. always trafficked in fear mongering. No, you fear Let the left wing Marxist media's disinformation campaign begin. Prepare to be bombarded with the talking point that Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Pakistan were left out of the seven countries banned from entering the U.S. because of supposed favoritism by President Trump. Truth be told, President Trump is merely enforcing former President Obama's 2015 law restricting visas from those seven countries of concern already passed by Congress two years ago. Will the conniving globalist media set the record straight? Why was Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, and Pakistan, uh, and, uh, Pakistan and Egypt not included on this list if you are so concerned about this issue? We are concerned about the issue, Chuck, and that's why we put these seven countries initially into the executive order that were identified previously by Congress, by both the House and the Senate and the Obama administration as being the seven most mm -hmm. uh, watched countries in regard to harboring terrorists. But you bring up a good point. Perhaps other countries needed to be added to an executive order going forward. A federal judge is putting a temporary stop to some of the most important parts of President Donald Trump's executive order banning citizens from seven Muslim majority countries from entering the U.S. This after a federal judge in New York grants an emergency stay halting deportations of people with valid visas who were caught in the confusion of the president's immigration order. Well, one of the things in the order apparently is to include green card holders. As far as green card holders moving forward, it doesn't affect them. What Donald Trump wants to do, what Homeland Security wants to do under him, is focus on the criminal illegal aliens and get them out of the United States. Who possibly could object to that? Another falsehood talking point is that the ban is targeting Muslims exclusively as the left's fear campaign continues unabated. There is an exception made, a potential for the exception made for anyone who is not Muslim. There are no exceptions allowed for someone who is Muslim. Hang on a second. The order also says persecuted Muslims have priority as well. So, I mean, that's a piece that's just getting totally un either whatever you want to call it, misreported or not fully reported. It doesn't just say Christians. It also says persecuted Muslims get uh, priority as well. So this is not a Muslim ban, John. Uh, this is all this is is identifying the seven countries. And the reason we chose those seven countries was those were the seven countries that both the Congress and the Obama administration identified as being the seven countries that were most identifiable with dangerous uh, terrorism taking place in their country. The executive order signed by President Trump is discriminatory, uh, discriminatory on religion, and, and, and frankly quite disgusting. It's not based on religion. It's based on places where there are substantial evidence that people are sending terrorists into our country. It is the left that is setting itself up for a seditious fall into the abyss of American history. The left simply still assuming that they are in charge. Uh, do you think the president should be banned from coming to the United Kingdom? I think a state visit when there is this sort of ban in place is wrong. I don't want us to run out the red carpet for a president who has a shameful uh, ban like he has. So he should be banned from coming to the UK? I don't think there should be a state visit while this ban is in place. But this is a brand new day, and the Constitution and our immigration laws will no longer be ignored. John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, we gambled on Donald Trump, didn't we? Or at least we thought we did two years ago, and he came up royal flush.
With a, another handful of spades in his other fist. Overt delivery. Shocking truthfulness. Unbelievable. Donald Trump, the real deal. The return of the republic. He's even now reversed himself on torture, which was the only thing that he was promoting that I thought was wrong. But he was being honest about it. The fact that our enemies use it against us and the fact that it does sometimes get good information. Still, we can't lower ourselves to their level. But he's now come out and said he will follow what the Secretary of Defense says, Mattis. And Mattis is against torture, so he is now against torture. Done. Boom. Not a flip-flop, but a change of course from almost perfect to basically perfect. The enemy is going to continue to misrepresent who Trump is and who we are and what we're standing for and what we're doing here. But it hit me like a thunderbolt this morning that I needed to muster every bit of my focus, my will, my oratory skills to simply and succinctly boil it down and encapsulate it for the listeners and viewers of this transmission. We say it a lot, but I want it to sink into your bones real good. This country is in a fight for its life. This planet is in a fight for its life against the technocrats that are a very wicked, evil group of mad scientists, basically. You're living in a science fiction movie. And Donald Trump is the instinctive, ancestral archetype of a man not caring what the enemy thinks, not caring about PR, not caring about propaganda, but knowing the truth and risking his life, his name, his treasure, along with all the rest of us on the front line, to try to truly save humanity's future from a very, very wicked group of people. Make no mistake, everybody, I don't care what color you are, I don't care where you came from, I don't care whether you're a man or a woman. If you're fighting the globalists, you're on the front lines in defense of this species against a very alien, satanic evil. And I want to just shoot the viewer straight right now. I mean every single word of what I say on this broadcast. In fact, we're facing a situation far worse than I can even articulate here. But if we face the enemy and if we admit how serious the stakes are, we have the will, the history, the destiny to defeat this enemy and through this great trial come out on the other side at the next level for our species. This is the great test we're now entering into. This is the great battle. This is the war. And make no mistake, Donald Trump is delivering with a great group of men and women around him and, and, and the supporters of this broadcast and others in a true attempt to defeat the globalist program. He is delivering on every front with military precision and speed. He understands that he is in a incredibly epic historical moment. And that is why the enemy is pulling out every stop they've got because they're losing and they're desperate and they're scared. In nine days, he did more for this country and its sovereignty than Ronald Reagan ever did. It's a false statement when people say, oh, he's done more in a week than Obama did in eight years. Obama was trying to hurt the country. Obama was trying to impoverish the population. Obama was trying to break our will in his own public statements and in their own white papers and books. But not just America, the world, telling Latin Americans communism's good. Telling Cubans that Fidel Castro was great. Telling Africans they can't have cars or air conditioning. These are selfish, arrogant, monstrous, spiritually blind people that we're up against who have turned themselves over to an interdimensional sickness. This is a spiritual battle 
President Trump knows that and has invoked the true God of the universe, the true God of creation, the God of life, the true all-powerful in our quest to be free and our long march into the heavens. And that's why all of us have to rededicate ourselves even stronger and work harder. And we have to be focused and we have to realize that that's our destiny and that it's not tiring or exhausting, but that it's fulfilling. And that's why we have to be very serious and very focused. Because the stakes are so high. And we're not being given this short reprieve just out of the blue. This is because of prayer and action and, and people being persecuted and working hard so that we have a basic platform to fight the enemy. But if we squander this platform, if we squander this chance, humanity's going to go into long, 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 hundreds of years in my gut analysis of serious, serious hardcore dehumanization and enslavement that is unimaginable. We're already going to go through some incredible tribulations in the future. The AI wars, bio attacks, system breakdowns. We're already facing a lot, even if we have good leaders. With evil leaders, we are insured horrific humiliation and bondage. So, at an animal level, I disdain our enemies and their minions, but their minions are soul-sucked victims and zombies who we should cry for, not hate. The upside-down world of D.C. and Austin, Texas, and Berlin, Germany, with women with their tops off, screaming Allah Akbar, and calling for open borders for Islamists that will literally put them in slave pits, that is desperate, hysterical, self-hate and loathing and projecting onto all of us that want to save them and empower them. They're projecting onto us their own hatred for themselves. And we just have to figure out ways to reach out to these people. That's just one example. And we have to remember that if you go to Iran, they've got big studies out, polls, upwards of 80% of the population doesn't want to be under the mullahs, but they are under a spiritual dictatorship. In Saudi Arabia, the vast majority of the people don't like what they're under. So you have to understand, I didn't want these wars with the Muslims because most of them actually don't want to be part of it. I didn't want to start the whole trigger that would destabilize the Middle East and cause this flood into Europe. But now that we're at that point, it is anti-war what Donald Trump is doing, trying to stem the tide of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and trying to block those borders into historical Istanbul, formerly Constantinople. So, of course, Islamic State supporters react angrily to Trump's temporary refugee halt, which, of course, is a carbon copy of the law passed in 2013 by President Obama. The UN vets the refugees and certifies them with fake passports and fake visas and ships them in. And we see weekly attacks in Europe and in North America. We saw another attack that killed six people and injured dozens in Canada. With the men screaming Allah Akbar, one Islamic sect attacking the other. And the headline was, oh, a terror attack on the poor Muslims. They were attacking because they thought that the Muslims in the mosque were heretical, a liberal mosque. They're not going to put up with that, but only in this upside-down 1984 world. Would you have ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC saying, look, I saw it this morning, right after the Muslim ban, which isn't a ban, 87% can still come in, a mosque got hit by terror. What type of craziness is this? Canadian Prime Minister says, Mosque shooting a terror attack on Muslims, Reuters. Yes, by Islam. The biggest victims of Islam are those living under Islam.
The more extreme the country, the more debt, the more carnage. There is no peace within the House of Islam or without the House of Islam. And the House of Islam is everything Islam dominates. And everything outside the House of Islam translates to the House of War. Truly, truly, in modern times, undebatably, a satanic religion that enslaves women, that pulls down art, that destroys open free societies, and is worshipped by the twisted, manless, hateful women who at all these marches the men brag, we have it on video, I walk behind my wife. Really, how about right beside them? Or in front of them to open the door. Oh no, don't patronize me. That's right, make me a slave. These women are crazed demons. Jezebel spirits turned over to the enemy. It's a wavelength, a spirit. They're crazed, they're in charge. They feel the satanic power of Orthodox Islam behind them. The gates of hell opening to vomit out the jihad. And they lust to have their jaws broken and their noses broken and their genitals cut off and to be kept in closets and slave pens. They hate their father. They hate Christ. They hate the West. And so hell will be their abode and their homeland. But they are not with us. Let them go forth from here into their hell prepared for them by their father. But what's happening with Trump is that he used cult of personality to a certain extent with some of the uninformed voters, but he simply saw the global movement against globalism taking place and saw that the nation states were awakening, something he'd been promoting for 40 years in words and in deeds and in money he spent. And he rode that wave to victory and he sees the historic time we're in and seeks to actually create so much wealth and so much prosperity and so much innovation and so much equal distribution of opportunity, not redistribution of wealth, forcibly. He sees that opportunity and he has taken it. It's in the famous play written by William Shakespeare, titled William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, where he codified from historical writings uh, a bit of a uh, verbal or literary flourish when he said, there is a tide in the affairs of men, when taken at the flood, leads on to fortune. And fortune passes before us every day, so seize the day. I would add to that quote, but what is our fortune? Brutus, there is a tide in the affairs of men, which taken at the flood leads on to fortune. Omitted all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in the miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat. The magic time, the electric time, the time of destiny, the time of decision, the great crossroad fulcrums that run down through the ages, this the biggest, the greatest, the largest, the most magic, the deepest, the widest. The greatest sea of opportunity and destiny that our species has ever floated upon. Or dive deep into the mysteries. We cross this sea. And on the other side is the promise of the Republic. The United States in the destiny of the world. In our hands. The enemy believed to steal it and to pull us down. And still may succeed, because in the affairs of men, God gives us free will. Free creatures we are. The enemy tells us all day long that we don't have free will, and we can be programmed, and we can be controlled, and we're just like a clock. Because they know that's not the truth. We can choose to be unconscious. We can choose, under free will, to turn over our will. It's called being suggestible. And most people I know are unconscious. They are suggestible. They are in a trance state, a twilight between consciousness and unconsciousness. I seek to awaken the sleeper. We must break the public out of the trance and not just debate them on the false facts they've been fed, but with the energy of the secret place of the Most High that Psalms talks about, 
transcend their petty brainwashing, circumvent it, and somehow unlock their minds to see that they are indeed in Plato's allegory of the cave. It's in those concepts that we're going to break the chains. More and more I realize that. Not debating them on their fake facts. Not, not going, oh, okay, yes, the whole Pennsylvania Avenue was empty. No one was there. Even though we have all the photos and videos and I was there and it was totally jam-packed and record viewage you know, everywhere. And then, we, and then we debate them and stoop down to their level when we know they're a pack of liars and we shouldn't laugh at someone that says, ah -ha, Trump didn't have an audience. Just say, oh, you poor thing. And I mean that. Gosh, you really believe that? And is that, is that why he got elected? Or what are you so scared of? You know, I'm against the establishment and they were all against Trump. Oh, yeah, he put in Goldman Sachs people who have a history of fighting globalism. And who've been on the inside and who are fighting it because they've been on the inside. Everybody just wants to sit here like losers and believe that we have a destiny to fail and that we can't ever affect change or that we couldn't take over. That's what's happening right now. We're taking over the government. And we've got an idea that's a trillion times more superior to their ideas. We have a culture superior to what they're pushing. And we're going to crush them. And, and, and not out of some pleasure to crush them. They need to be crushed, as an example, and they will be crushed because they're not going to get out of our way. So, <clears throat> lace up your boots because we're going to have to run these people down. And they're going to attack us and they're going to get physical. And whoever fires first loses. But when they start pulling the trigger, we are in quite the paradox right now. The corporate-controlled globalist media is running around twisting and lying and spinning at levels never before seen. They've sunk to new lows, if that's possible. President Trump is overperforming, in my view. I came out Friday and I came out Sunday and I said, Trump's got to back off this torture thing. It's the only thing messing up his perfect record. Came out today and said that uh, he's not for torture now. And I'm not taking the credit for that. I'd give the British Prime Minister credit for that and the American people and all of us credit. That's the thing. He listens and he does the right thing and he just gets better with time. This broadcast is not a Donald Trump butt kissing uh event but let me tell you something when you see something this good and all the good things that are happening and every form of evil attacking trump and and, and this broadcast and and you the listeners understand it's because we're having a big effect and we should be very very thankful to god that this is even happening i want to run through literally dozens of articles right now that are super important first off how many days has it been he's been in office Nine days. Nine days. We're in day number nine. If you count even that half day on that Friday. And already you signed an executive order that for every new regulation that's created, two have to be removed. People always said, there ought to be a law for every new regulation, you got to get rid of one. Well, see, everything you always heard granddaddy say is now happening, isn't it? Oh, and the real estate industry, they had all sorts of incentives and, and, and sweetheart deals where the, they would get uh, money that, 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 that smaller investors wouldn't get. He's getting rid of that. What's the right word? Because it's not even incentives. Incentives are fine. Uh, it, it, it's not even perks. It's, it's, it, it's just deals where they get paid taxpayer money. Trump's been getting rid of that. I mean, it's just everything is about a level playing field, a level playing field, a level playing field. It's amazing. And then he signs the executive order. Trump signs executive order to slash regulations. Reuters, President Donald Trump signed an order on Monday that will seek to drastically pare back federal regulations by requiring agencies to cut two existing regulations for every new rule introduced. Here's the president. In terms of regulation, um, these folks are small business owners. 
and they're great people. They've been representative of the community, the small business community. If you have a regulation you want, number one, we're not going to approve it because it's already been approved probably in 17 different forms. But if we do, the only way you have a chance is we have to knock out two regulations for every new regulation. So if there's a new regulation, they have to knock out two. But it goes far beyond that. We're cutting regulations massively for small business and for large business, but they're different, but for small business. And that's what this is about today. And this will be the biggest such act that our country has ever seen. There will be regulation, there will be control, but it will be a normalized control where you can open your business and expand your business very easily. And that's what our country has been all about. That's what our country has been all about. Now, let's see the response of small business owners uh, to what the president is now doing. The mere fact that he um, cares about what our challenges are and what we deal with on a, on a regular basis, on a daily basis, um, trying to grow our small businesses uh, is really extraordinary. He, he really cares about what our problems are and how uh, to come up with some solutions um, to, to rectify those issues. Can you identify yourselves, please? Yes, Joy Weather of Anthus, upstate New York. Irma Aguirre, restaurant owner from Las Vegas, Nevada. Hit pause for a minute. Think how beautiful this is. It goes on and on. The clip's up on Infowars.com. He just brings real small businesses to the White House and puts them on the podium to say whatever they want. It's about you. It's about the people. It's about devolving power back to the people, back to the states. He didn't take over TPP as some giant uh, carrot he could hold over the elites and make them do what he wanted to. If he wanted power or wanted money, he could have made hundreds of billions out of that. The way the laws are written, the president can do it. But no, he just said, nope, the whole thing's crap. It's gone. Back to Congress, back to the people. Bye-bye, TPP. That big nightmare the globalists tried to ram through for 10 years. Let's go back to the small business owners. I'd like to add that the president has been our president for the past week and starting on his second week. And what he's doing is a terrific job in trying to listen to all walks of life, listening not just to large businesses, but small businesses like us, and really being resilient in the things that he wants to do to move business forward. Not just large businesses, but also small businesses. And that gives me a lot of hope. So my name is Natalia Luis, and I'm uh, Chairman and CEO of M. Luis Construction, M. Luis Products. We manufacture asphalt material, recycle material, and perform construction services for the public sector. Uh, I am I am grateful today for the opportunity to have a candid conversation on some of the overregulation that impedes our ability to be efficient and as effective as we can be. I think this is a huge step forward and we're looking forward to more to come. Thank you. All right. Again, these are all really important, but I need to move on to the whole Muslim ban that never was, that the media uh, is basically deceiving on here in just a second because here he is trying to jumpstart the economy. And then, of course, he's got to secure the borders. You understand that out of the 180-plus countries out there, the United States is about, depending on which study you look at, the third easiest to come to. And I have another clip. In fact, it's in my stack, but I can't find it. Will you give me that clip again, Matt, or, or, or the actual news article from the federal government uh, where they admit that we get globally two-thirds of the refugees in the program? In years past, they were about to uh, flood us with even more Islamicists and, and that the U.N. actually runs the program. And, you know, I knew that, but to actually see the video clips and actually see it on the federal government's own uh, website, Admitting that the UN is who decides who can come here and then we just accept it is absolutely incredible. And to see the latest terror attack that killed at least six people, injured dozens at a mosque where one group of Islamists has come in and kill the other Islamists, rest their soul. One group of Muslims come attack the other group of Muslims. This is what goes on in the Middle East. But the media preys on the public's ignorance and goes, there was a terror attack on the poor Muslims. See all this Muslim bashing? Yeah, by by guys that are as, admitted as, as uh, Islamicists. That's the level of upside down 
bizarro world deception we're dealing with. But before I get to all of that and set the record straight with the facts that are incontrovertible, we're ending a special that we started running on Friday. I can only run it through the end of the week uh, because uh, of contractual reasons. And we only run this a few times a year. You can get 25% off all Alexa Pure gravity-fed stainless steel water filter systems that are amazing that sit on your countertop and cut out all the garbage, all the trash. Uh, again, ending soon, get 25% off Alexa Pure Pro water filter systems and Alexa Pure Breeze air filters at InfoWarsStore.com. And everybody must have these. These are the best gravity-fed systems. We've got four or five different brands that all have very, very high standards. Some are better at this than, than at that. But the point is, Alexa Pure is up there in the top two or three, probably even the best. It's what I use in my home. I also use some other systems. But they've got travel sizes. They've got bigger ones. It sits there in your kitchen. You put the water in it. It goes through. It cuts out the glyphosates, the fluoride, the arsenic, the lead, the chemicals, the herbicides, the pesticides. The M I mean, there's so much stuff. The, the fuel additives that are in all 50 states' water supply, whether you're getting municipal water or groundwater, well water, everybody needs this. We have fixed shower heads as well. You breathe that in. You absorb it there. We have them for your bathtubs. We have uh, other tabletop units. We have some of the best uh, systems out there for survival as well. We have some of the best reverse osmosis systems. You can't go to a Home Depot because I know years ago I'd go and buy a new one if I moved houses. It'd be 300 bucks for the systems we're selling reverse osmosis for 150 I mean, it's incredible the type of deals we've got is what I'm saying. So this gravity fed or reverse osmosis, we've got it all. It's a giant water purification area because we know that the, one of the number one causes of cancer is poisons in the water. So for yourself, your children, and everybody, if you just drink filtered water and the stuff out of bottles is questionable, I mean, I drink some sparkling water myself that I like from Italy, but that's more of a treat instead of a Coca-Cola. Uh, the point, or sometimes I drink Tapa Chico. The point is that's a treat. This is what you use to cook your vegetables, to, to make your iced tea with. It's all there. And the air system, I bought comparable systems for $800 five years ago. Now, costs have dropped because of technology getting cheaper. But the leading competitor is $500 that has basically the exact same specs. It's 100 and what is it right now? It's normally 225 but with 25% off, it's just some insane uh, deal right now uh, up on the site. There it is, one forty nine ninety six. So that's an amazing deal right there. At two hundred twenty five dollars, folks, it's a great deal. Right now, it's one forty nine. Right now, it is one forty nine at infowarsstore dot com. Also, we're about to sell out a super Mel Vitality. It's amazing. Secret twelve vitamin B twelve is now back in stock. Get ten percent off on that as well at Infowars Life. Dot com or call toll-free, 888-253-3139. I'm going to say this real real simply. I want to thank you all for your support, but you're you're getting really good top-of-the-line nutraceuticals, supplements, Hillary for Prison shirts. Everything we do affects change. Everything we do either stands up for freedom or supports your body and your family. The very best non-GMO heirloom pollinated seeds, uh, open pollinated seeds, giant selection, one of the biggest out there. The best air filters, the best water filters, uh, the best gun parts. I mean, it's all there. And when you shop with us, you are literally putting money into an organization that is savage, committed, and completely crazed to 110% running over the globalist. We're committed. And we're very, very thirsty to take down the enemy. We've got a lot of new preparedness products that have been added to the store. It haven't even been reviewed yet, but I've gone out personally and found out the top reviews, whether it's backpacks or solar tents or shortwave radios, the very best, the very lowest prices. Infowarsstore.com or Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139. And I got to tell you, people that were buying products from us, films and books and water filters 20 years ago, 21 years ago, I know a lot of people are original listeners. And thank you. Please don't thank me. When you call in, one of the few things that annoys me is thanking me because I want to thank you. You're the people that got ridiculed and made fun of. I did too, but we're together. We're, I mean, we're fellow fighters in this great awakening. So you humble me by your support and your prayers. So let's just get out of the way. I thank you. You thank me. Let's move forward against the new world order. But really, 
if you want to thank us, help yourself and filter your water. If you want to help us, help yourself and go get our probiotic, Biome Defense. I mean, it, it's the best out there. It's amazing. If you want to help yourself, introduce yourself to the true halogen, X2, that your body needs, not the bad halogen. Or Brain Force. Or BioTrucelenium. Or the, the Sleep Aid Knockout. Or, or Oxy Powder. Or Liver Shield. Or Living Defense. Or Winter Sun. Or Super Female Vitality. Or Bio PCA. Or Deep Cleanse. Or Vitamin Mineral Fusion. Or Anthroplex. Or Lung Cleanse. Or Prostagard. Bone and Joint Formula Support. It's all there. Now... Here it is, U.S. Department of State Diplomacy in Action. And if you read here, we put it on screen and highlight it for TV viewers. They say that 70 plus percent of worldwide refugees through the U.N. are resettled here. The change was they've now flooded Europe with Muslims more than they have here. But, but, but we get 70 plus percent. And the United Nations, if you go read this page, this facts page, are the ones that vet it and set it all up. Go read U.S. Department of State Refugee Admissions. And you scroll down, and it says right there that the United Nations is in charge of it and tells us what to do. And who's in charge of that? Peter Sutherland, who created the euro, and who openly says we're going to get rid of the United States and Europe by flooding them with people that aren't compatible like Muslims. While the UNHCR reports that less than 1% of all refugees are eventually resettled in third countries, the United States welcome almost two-thirds, number I have was 75 percent, of these refugees more than all other resettlement countries combined. I saw a number at 75 percent, but that's, that's close to it. The point is, no teleprompter here, folks. So you just got me in an exaggeration. It's usually the other way around, but almost two-thirds. So the lion's share. It's like we pay for half the U.N., and then we get lectured all day. And all Trump's doing when he says, with this new uh, legislation, to begin pulling us out of the U.N. is negotiation power. You're not going to have Saudi Arabia and Qatar heading up the Human Rights Commission and the Human Rights Board. Again, this is a joke. Women are the property of their husbands in Saudi Arabia, and they treat them like dogs, worse than dogs. And so, again, the weirdo, crazy feminists run around worshiping them and, and, and like... Actually, a lot of liberal women I know actually go out and marry some Islamists that will boss them around and slap them upside the head, I guess because they're so pissed that, you know, uh, Western men won't treat them bad. So I've just personally had enough, and he signed these three executive orders that only enforce what Obama passed in 2013. Obama bombed five of seven countries Trump banned. Media doesn't care. That's up on Infowars.com with all the graphs and all the facts. Surprise, surprise. Soros funded group behind effort to stop Trump's border plan. Oh, of course. That's, that's really hard to believe, isn't it? Canadian terrorists shout, Allah Akbar. Can we cue the feminists up when we come back? Chanting on Akbar with their breast hanging out. Try that in Saudi Arabia, sweetheart. I love how the feminists always say it's not about objectification. And you go to one of their rallies, it's like triple X, man. Women, they're naked, hanging out, screaming, yelling, screaming, you know, the name of their genitals. Uh, and it's like, okay, whatever. You know, you don't, like, we're liberal. Aren't we shocking? And it's like, no, you just never, I guess, had a good experience in your life. So you, people usually show off their sexuality in public, don't really have a lot of it, is my personal experience. Now, Mild-mannered folks is what you got to look out for. But, I mean, it really is just a bunch of arrested development idiots that, that like, are looking for somebody to, to set them straight. So they're just like, oh, Akbar, I love jihad. Screw you, America. Well, go over there, you dumbasses. I mean, that brings a new meaning to love it or leave it. Merle Haggard, the fight inside of me. Because, hey, I don't mind you switching sides, standing up for stuff you believe in, but you want to sit here and have our milk and honey, but then try to overthrow it? I have a free speech right to say you're a dirty scumbag. You know, here's the deal. They got a New York Times writer. I want to show TV viewers a photo of this woman. Another crazy, ditzy, out of control, wannabe alpha that's not an alpha. She's a beta. There are a lot of women that are alphas. They normally are pretty calm and 
happy about their lives, uh, not like the betas that want to be alphas in this soft, unsavage world. They run around cozying up to Islam because it pats them on the head and says, sure, sweetheart, I'm a big feminist. Under Sharia law, baby, you're going to get lots of empowerment when we cut your genitals off. Times journalist calls for assassination of Trump. That's up on Infowars.com. Par for the course. Just look at that. Look at the crazy Jezebel eyes on that loon. You talk about hell living with her, boy. Woo! You talk about a nut. And she's now in a man's world wanting to kill people. You guys try your little coup d'etat. What's vice pushing along with everybody else right now? What would happen in the minutes and hours after the coup in America? Then they basically salivate, Mike Pearl does, and talking about normalizing the overthrow of Trump. They got all these TV shows about him getting assassinated and how they're going to take over. And, oh, boy, going to have that Bill Ayers moment where you march 50 million of us off to re-education camps and then got to kill 25 million of us. Good luck you actually take the gloves off, you dumb bastards. We really trying to fix this peaceful. But you want to get in a fight? You go ahead and start it. We'll finish it. But know this. You're not going to get any quarter. You're not going to get any quarter. Because you're now walking on the fighting side of me. And a lot of other people. Understand? Hoss. I love how the weaker these people are, the more cowardly they are, the more they shoot their mouths off about how they're going to do some killing. How they're going to do some hanging. How they're going to do some murdering. And that ties into Trump joining with Russia to start bombing hundreds of targets all over. Well, I guess that hadn't been announced, the hundreds of targets that have been hit, but hundreds have been hit all over Syria, command and control bases that were being run by John McCain and Lindsey Graham. No, they went over there and met with them. They were running them. And that's why they're suddenly totally pissed. And that Wahhabist Brennan, who admittedly converted to Islam, is running around calling Trump a traitor. When have you ever seen a CIA director, or now former one, running his mouth in the news, calling the president a scumbag and despicable and all these horrible things? Oh, and now Chucky e. Schumer's crying because we're not letting people in from six terror countries until the vetting starts. Chucky e. Schumer, who supports Israel being able to have a wall, he supports Israel's wall and extreme vetting for people that get to get into their country, but not for America, right, Chucky e. Schumer? Chucky e. Schumer looks like a caricature of Emperor Palpatine. He looks palpably evil. So that's all coming up. We got a big story uh, where the, it's up on DrudgeReport.com where they're open, leather Michael Snyder article, they're openly calling for civil war and pushing it in America. George Soros didn't double all that funding because he wants to play tiddlywinks. Just a little uh, point for everybody. My old friend Joe Rogan, who's got something like 18 million viewers a week to his podcast. I think it's more than that sometimes. It's also on XM, last time I checked. It's one of, it's one of the biggest things out there. Uh, the Joe Rogan Experience. It'll be streamed live on Joe's YouTube channel. YouTube.com. Powerful J-R-E. And later uploaded to YouTube, iTunes, and various other platforms. I'm going to be on it next Wednesday.